Hold on. It's what awards are made of. Right. Thank you for joining us here on a Sunday. We love Sundays, ladies and gentlemen, because there's only four of us here. But the thing is, um, we have got a classic show for you this morning because it is Sunday and Jenny Raymond's here with her classroom. Do that again. Hey. Squat, 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 Jenny, squat, squat, squat. It's New Year, squat. You've got yes. to do 50 squats a day. That's right. I came to the studio, she's like that. I thought, oh, go on, down. Uh, two. Bicep curls. Bicep curls. Deep One. squats. Oh, look at the one. You oh. wait till the lunges. Oh, oh. wait till the lunge. Yes. Do lunge. What, you need slacks? No, you better not. All right. Uh, toe raises. Toe raises. Oh, calves. Yes. Oh, yes, calves. that's right. Because apparently in, the, in 2016, you can't stand still, Stephen. No. You can't stand still. You've got to stand. You've got to down. <laughs> down. Uh, dip, step. Oh. Uh, right. Up and down. Come on, cameras. Come All right. Up and down. Come on, everyone. Up and down. down. Up and down. Oh, nah. Oh, oh Steve's Steve, like, careful so you won't get back up again. <laughs> <laughs> And we come, we're going in the you, studio, we spray lubricant on all the, everything, and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. Well, of course, you feel better now. Yes, much oh, better. Oh, I feel Exercise. better now. I'm up and down, love. Go on. <laughs> He's just doing that with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> a piece for a wave, that's cool. <laughs> right. This is a quilting classroom. We're supposed to be serious, you know. Sorry. So, um, Jenny Raymond, uh, welcome to quilting classroom. Thank yes. you for turning up. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, and explain today <laughs> what... <laughs> <laughs> what we are doing today... I'm going to ask you the question. Oh, sorry, rehearsed. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So, yes. Jenny, what, we, what can we see be expecting from you today? Right, today we're going to be making a quilt. We're starting really? making what, a in the quilt? quilt? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sort of block of the month, and it's a block of three block of the month. months. It's a bomb. B-O-M, block of the month, you see. And what we're actually making, ignore the tea, is what's behind me. What's here beyond this here? This one, go with, go with the teacher. Here she yes. is. Okay. So this is a story. Right. right. Ready for a quick story? Go on then. The sun, or it could be the moon, is shining. The stars are out. The geese are flying across the twilight sky. Underneath that is the remnants of the sunset. Behind the deep, faraway mountains is the brilliance of the setting sun. Then there is the lake in front of the mountains with a little bit of beach, because you have to have lakes with a bit of beach. The deep, dark, distant forest, thick with trees, and in front of it, the row of little houses with their snail trails in the garden. In front of the houses, it's a patchwork block. In front of the houses is the municipal gardens all neatly laid out with their beautiful flowers and you'll know how I did those with a die cutting machine. In front of the beach on the promenade is the beach and of course you've got to have beach balls, you must have food, cupcakes and an ice cream cone. And then there is the sea, look at the lovely waves swishing gently against the sand with the little boats sailing along. And this will fit on a single bed, it will also fit the wadding we've got on the show and it takes fat quarters only and not only with a pack of fat quarters we've got can you make the entire quilt you can bind it and do the backing <laughs> here is the backing okay so I, i've used all the colors i didn't use on the front for the back look at this totally and absolutely Just loads of random yes size eight, yes eight inch? it's 45 by 60. That's what I said. Yep. Right. Three six two eight three seven is your first item. Now, what we're going to do, because I'm my, I'm useless in this scenario. So basically, what we're going to do is start off, take you through all the products that Jenny's going to be using in the show. Uh, there is a classroom, so we want to get that classroom started. Uh, behave yourselves. Uh, put all your stuff nice and neat and tidy on your desk, and I want no messing about at the back. Okay. Yep, quite. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And take it out your mouth. Yeah. Why, right, Jingo? Right, on, on get. In terms of that, it's hard to say. Right, okay. Uh, we're going to start with the multiple. We're going to start with fabric. Yes. Because at the end of the day, this is what we're talking about, is putting these lovely quilts together. We're starting with 600% uh, cotton fat quarters. And then includes 36. I don't think I've ever done a 36 pack before. No, well, I wanted to choose some fabric. So I, I looked at these six and I thought, I'm going to use them all. Right. So I have used a lot of the brights in the front of the quilt and a lot of the pastels on the back. But the, you can choose to mix and match. Is they that what's all on there? They all go together. Yes. So, so if people so, want to make exactly what you've yes. made. And those fabrics will make that quilt, that backing, and do the binding, and you'll have some left over. The whole lot. The whole lot. For so you get the whole lot for that amount of money. £42.99. pence. If you're a club member, a bit less than that. And there's a thirteen ninety five savings. So thirty eight sixty nine. That's a fab, fab offer. Right, cracking on. Yeah. This is uh, all these items, by the way, we will be doing a quite a, a swift preview <coughs> of the yeah. show. Uh, but they are available at creativegraph.tv. Next up here, we have by stripes. You have stripes. Now, what are these for? These are for the, right. these are the, yes. the 
you uh, might want to not to buy just one pack. You okay. might only want to do part of the quilt, or okay. you might just want to have the fabric. So you don't have to buy the six. Right. All six fabrics are available on the website as individual ones. Fabulous. This is just one of them to show you that you can buy them singly. So if you like, so if you picked out the stripes on the sailing boats or the sea, the sun, the sea, the sun, the sea, the sky, the sea, yep. the sun, yes. uh, when you've got them today, brand new today, uh, and beautiful, so very, very classy. Really nice. Stripes, yes, Absolutely. Isn't it? Very classy. Yes. And it's great for bags. It's great for beaches. It's great for cushions. It goes anywhere, and it's really nice cotton fabric. Beautiful stuff. Three six two five four eight, uh, and it's all part of the uh, crafting showcase this week. Uh, and then moving through uh, to education, and that's what this show yes. is all about. Yes. Uh, and we love to bring this. And Jenny's sort of written many, 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 many books, uh, and we've got a couple for you here. Now this one here is our first, uh, and it's the multi by Easy Peasy Patchwork Two. I do love your lingo. Uh, and then you've got the foldy rolly patchwork. <laughs> Pizzazz by Jenny. Of course, who else would call a book <laughs> Roly Poly Patchwork? Uh, 362614. Both these together now over £26.99 because one of them actually isn't a book. It's, it's a, a DVD. It's a DVD. Tell us a quickly about this okay, one. Okay, very quickly about it. Uh, this one does blocks. Okay. So you might want to use all these fabrics and make up the blocks that are in that book. All right. the fabrics will work very well with those ideas. It's also got the special flying geese I'm doing that are in the quilt will be in that Invaluable. book. Invaluable. Now, we have sold lots of templates and people don't always know what to do on the templates. The DVD you've got will take you through all the templates. Now, all the blocks that are on that DVD are there on the wall over there. Oh, you've done a blown-up version. Okay. So over there. there is, no messing about. No Steve wish you hadn't put in for overtime now. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I hung it slightly sideways, folks, so if you just turn your heads to one side, you'll see it the right way up. All right, so if everyone turns Which their side? heads to the side, that, that's the top. That's the top, all right. Okay. Oh, now, yeah. Now you yeah. can see, yes, it's arced at the top, but yeah. I, by the time I got it hung up, I was too late to put it the right way round. Then all the books, the blocks that are in the book Thanks, are, Ed. It's turned oh, it well for you. done. That's upside Thanks, down. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. All the blocks that are in the book are behind the telly. Oh, there. up there, Steve, yes. up there. Steve. And in front of it is the DVD where you can see I'm pontificating at great length about Look. how you do the grandmother's fan. Presenter in vision. Yes. And I've the nice thing what? about that is, of course, you're getting it exact. You can stop it. You can, you know, run it backwards and forwards. You forward. can stop You me have got quiet. quiet. You can mute me. I go quiet. Totally quiet. My husband loves them. Um, and it's a chance to see how you make the blocks, how you do the tools. You've got two hours of me prattling, and that, for that amount of money, is not I, I bad. Honestly, we have, we have some fun here. We like to have uh, plenty of fun, but you know what? I'm really, really serious when it comes to buying education, because what you have there yep. is uh, years and years and decades of experience that you can't find normally when you're trying to make these things happen, and you can do it via a book or via a DVD now, and I love moving pictures. And they pictures. are completely different, so and you're not, not you're buying not the same thing twice. No, right. no, no, no. Okay, no. Well, uh, 29 if you're club member, 26 99 for those. Uh, while we're on the subject of books, uh, we've got uh, the Karen Hellaby books here. We've got uh, a, a multi buy for you again, uh, and this is 362610. Uh, we've got flying geese and magic pillows, hidden quilt. Well, I don't want a hidden quilt because I, I can't yeah, use right, it because you can wrap it up. You see, it's also a cushion as well. Oh, I see. Now, the reason for having this book in is Karen does another way of doing flying geese. So, as you've got flying geese in the quilt, you might like to investigate more possibilities with a very different way of making them. So, that's in there for that reason. This is here because, again, it has a whole load of blocks you could use in rows as we've got there, and it's a fun book to have. Yeah. And if you're stuck with what to give somebody, um, a hidden pillow where you wrap the quilt up in a pillow is an it's absolute idea. It's a great idea, isn't idea. it? And yes. kids love them as well, Children don't they? Children absolutely yeah. adore them. Great You've stuff. got plenty of ideas, well laid out, well explained, nice and easy to follow. So really, and again, they don't conflict with the books and the DVD that no. I've done. The whole thing is completely different. Fabulous stuff. And the pair of them uh, with a £5 saving, £26.99, you'll have them forever. And let's talk about basic shapes. You talked about... Um, all of the shapes you have to make in yep. uh, quilting along the way and having templates is, uh, having is an is absolute, absolute must, isn't it? Mu makes yeah. life so much easier. Now we've got the multi buy here, which means you're going to get lots for your money. The 63 diamond, the easy Dresden and the easy angle 2 template. Uh, would these be three you'd recommend, madam? They are the three I'm using in the quilt. Okay. This makes the sun or the moon. This I'm using for the stripy sunset and indeed for the stars. Okay. And this is used for the delectable mountains. Now you don't have to use these three templates for those things. You can do many more things with these particular templates. It's a template I use frequently, the half square triangle. This one is great because it saves me hard sums. And this one does a 20 section Dresden plate, a five section grandmother's fan, a sort of moon. You can have it in multi sizes as you can with all of them. Great lot of templates. And of course that quote you showed us earlier on, and we, 
you know, you see the multi, the multi versatility, should I say, uh, of uh, those particular templates just on that. And it does so much more. So $29.99 or $26.99, another investment state in quilting. And, of course, cutting. Do not cut into your uh, work surfaces, no. etc. So you get the right kit for the job. I have one of these at home. I have one of those at home and I have one of those yeah. at home. And I don't even do patchwork quilting. But you need them. Thank now, you. For long last, they have put the lot together. So if the you are lot. thinking about starting off in the patchwork world, yeah. you are going to need a ruler. And this is a six and a half inch by 13 inch long ruler with the lines marked out so you can do your bias cuts, you can do your 60 degree cuts, etc. Marked out at eighth of an inches. Plus you've got the cutting device, the rotary cutter. Uh, great one to start with. It's the medium one, 45 mil. It's the one that everybody has one of these at least. I have about six. Plus you've got a spare blade because you have no idea of how easy it is to run over that pin by accident. And if you do wear the blade out because you've done a lot of fabric cutting, keep it for card, put the new one in so you've got a new blade. Absolutely then amazing. you've got your cutting mat, which is feet and inches one side. So you do your patchwork stuff on this side, you turn it over, and it's metric on the back, so you do your paper crafting on the back. Perfect. And the two can remain completely separate. Multitasking. Now it's the first time we've seen the red box this morning, which is, of course, sexy flexi pay. Uh, the multi day. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, they're on the ball this morning. The cutting mat, uh, the replacement blade. Of course, because we have uh, Ed who's uh, moonlighting this morning, uh, so he didn't know what that was. A sexy flexi pay, Ed. Hey, uh, and he's, on the, he's on the ball. He's on the yeah. ball. Uh, the easy, not, not Ed, that's, no. that's audio. No, that's audio. Right. Audio's people, on the ball. Different people. Yep. Uh, easy quilting template and the easy rule as well. Ed just likes spinning things around yeah. on the screen. He doesn't get a chance to do it Twirl very often. Pearl any yeah. one of ten and pick, It's like pick he's one. on holiday over here. <laughs> uh, now, thirty nine ninety nine. but if you're a club member, that multiplies a must, not just for... Oh, look, look, the kids are going to get carried away here. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you're a, a crafter per se, not just a patchwork crafter, any, anybody, any dressmaker, okay. any home and person, it's, it's flexible. The craft. Then you can stuff it in, including the wadding. Wadding, 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 wadding. Right. The wadding will fit the quilt. It's a really nice wadding, this. We sold out last time I had it on. It's Why do I need wadding? Because it's sort of the sandwich in between the layers. Okay. It's the warmth. It's, it's the, the snuggly bit. It's the cheese. And this is a really nice, easy to machine through, easy to hand quilt through. It's a lovely drape. It's a good old piece, isn't and it? And it's a good old piece. And it will fit the quilt. I've designed it so you get this wadding, that fabric, follow the destructions, you will have a quilt. On behalf or, of the viewer, thank you. Thank you. There you go. So you need all that. A must. You a need must. that. Okay. Is it not a, a want? It's a need. It's a need. A need. It's, it's a, a really need. nice. Three, six, washes three, three, well, two, quilts well. And you'll Good get stuff. that quality. F and when you're making, uh, making all that effort and putting all that work in, you want the final result yeah. to be a perfect. And you want it to look like you've done it before. And these are the sort of things that Jenny recommends. And that's why she's here. Basically. Or you can cut it up. You don't oh, have to have it as a whole piece. You can use it for cushions. So you might want to turn the ideas on the show into cushions. You don't have to well, make yeah, the quilt. Because there's half a dozen cushions there. Seven pounds nineteen pence for that one. Oh, it's back in stock. Where good, did you get that good. from, madam? That's ah, never well, in stock, is you it? See, I, I twisted arms. You've got contacts, haven't I you? Uh, now, next up from Clover, we have the Clover Mini Iron Two. It's a perfect patchwork crafts and project and applique. Basically, it's a mini iron. Yes. That's exactly what it's it says. Great for those little corners. It's great for flattening the seams because if it just flatten the seam, you're not going to damage the rest of the fabric. And if you're trying to get the, uh, the, the tip of your iron inside uh, a quilt or yes, something like that, or dress shirts, or you're trying to do applique or dress, you're trying to yes, uh, do all that. Burning your fingers. Yep, you uh, don't need to. I think I think everyone that's turned to patchwork quilting or sewing uh, in this building has bought a clover mini yes. iron, yeah. and uh, it's yep. absolutely essential. Great, it doesn't take up much space. Sits on the work surface, easy to transport around. Super. And talking of uh, sticking things on, uh, that's another flexi item as well. So if you want to take advantage of that, that could be your sexy flexi basket. And the reason I say that, thank you, it means that all the items you put in before checkout will be divided into two payments as well. Even something random that's nothing to do with quilting on the right. website. So anything you put anything in before you, put you close in, your basket. Anything. Yes. Once you've checked out, though, that's it. There's yes. no going back. Right. The gate is closed. So could you keep your sexy basket open for half an hour? You could do. Right, and then you just keep on shopping and bunging things in. And Unless then some, it in. sells out. Right. And if it sells out, then it disappears. Right. Because it's no longer available. And right. you get to the end and go, where's that gone? It's because it's sold out. And that's why, as, as hosts, we're all saying 20% of the stock, half the stock, yep. limited stock. Yep. That's why we're telling you these things. We're not just saying it for our health. Yep. Next up, talking of uh, sticking, sticking things, things on and the plique, we've got this for you next. And it's um, the Bonder web next, Johnny. Right. Really useful, this stuff. Uh, this is a fusible glue web, and basically I use it for applying things. You could use it for applying the stars in today's class. You could most certainly use it for applying the flowers to the corporation gardens when we get to there. Oh, right. So okay. that is a useful thing to have in stock. I mean, if you're opening a basket and you're going to go for postage, just pop it in. 251. Because, uh, 
Yeah, 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 as a club member, 251. And again, it stops your VARP again, stops things moving around. And if you're uh, new to sewing, as I am, and you're doing free motion mm. stuff, it just keeps yes. everything in place, doesn't it? Yeah. I sound like a professional. It does, okay, you're getting there. Okay. Thread, got to have thread. Thread, good to man, yes. uh, which is uh, one of my favourites. Uh, and this is always in my nan's uh, sewing box. Uh, you can just tell by the quality, the sheen on that thread. It's the Goodman Sul uh, Sulky Embroidery Orion Threads. Now, if you have bought an embroidery machine recently, these will work yes. for you as well. And lovely for satin stitching. Yes. If you're getting satin stitch your stars down, as I I did. That's a great thread. Is that because like a it's finishing fine. off, Jenny, is it? Yes. yes. And it, it really does pack in nicely. Use a thin needle, a size 6 or if you must a 70, and that thread will give you a sheen, wonderful, wonderful colour. Don't, uh, don't sort of slack off at the end. You've made all the effort. Uh, don't yes. go for the last threads yes. to finish off. Uh, Fifteen pounds and twenty-seven pence is the price. I'm trying to move along quickly. Yes. Someone's get this lady right. done and dusted by cross Okay. Fast. Now this, this I twisted arms. Oh, did you? When I did the last class of changing places, we had a circle and a heart on at quite an expensive price. Mm. I have twisted arms, and we have now got them on at half the price we had them on the show. Jenny, so Raymond. this is a big set. Look at that. This saving. is the easy 27 circle cut. Twenty-seven pounds or thereabouts. Twenty uh, twenty-six. Two six eight one five eight is the multi by circle and the easy heart twist. I remember this show. I think yes. I might have done it actually with you. You did do. I it did, was didn't a class I? Room. Yeah, I remember. And I've got this back at the price you. You can, it's a good price. Right, no, go for it today. If Jenny says it's a good price, 24.29 is an exceptional value because you don't just get that one, you, you also get the hearts as well. So you've can got multi sizes. Yep. Okay. Look, this is you the can do your quarter heart, circles, your half circles. You've got your heart. That was what we did the heart decoration with at the Changing Places classroom, which I believe is still on the website. Many of you have the PDF for it. So here are the tools, and Arm Twisting's got you that price. So and I'm use sure. It. I'm sure that in the future, Jenny will return and revisit these in other classrooms. So you'll already have them. 268158. And by the way, if you've got a sexy, flexi basket, it's half that. <laughs> Because wow, it goes into the basket, in. doesn't it? It goes happens. in, goes in easily. Then, ru right. more rulers, the patchwork ruler. Everyone needs a decent ruler. Now, I found out last year, uh, to my detriment, that you can't go without a ruler. I no, tried. You can't go without uh, three, a Three, five, eight, one, six, six. <laughs> it's so easy, 14 by four and a half inch ruler. Now, not just for patchwork, but for general sewing, really. For everything. Yeah. I mean, for measuring, for paper cutting, anything like that. You need, you need a nice, wide ruler. And run this up to 14 inches, which is yeah, unusual. It is, it's good, this one. This one's particularly good because it's got a quarter of an inch seam allowance marked. So you can put your edge of your here. fabric there and then Where's put the your pencil paper? down Do you there. Grab the paper paper. Paper. there. Let's put the bit of paper, paper behind, behind so you can it. see what we're talking about. There you go. And you've got your seam allowance marked on it. So it's easy to oh, do a seam around. allowance. Yep. There you go. We could always get the viewers to go around the other side of the television. Yeah. You can see it from the other side. Because um, so you can get mark your seam allowance on there. You've got your lines on it. They're nice red ones. Some people find the red lines better than the black see that, ones. This here, it, this is a quarter inch seam allowance right in here, you see. You've got, uh, do you know what? It's very clever, aren't they? Yes. These they are rulers, clever. very clever. Uh, 12 59 and you'll think to yourself, why didn't I buy that before? Yeah. 358166, and it's 12 59 which is worth about £6.30 in your flexi basket. And of course, we have to come to uh, the thing where well, all of those things together mean nothing. No. Because you end no. up with a pile of bits. Yes. And you don't want a pile of bits unless you can sew them together. And today we've got the Simplicity Lace 29 on the show. Uh, and now this just gives us three flexi payments. So the so sexy you can flexi put basket. Everything in there. Yes. And divide it by three. Well, if uh, this is almost like business class flexi payments, right. it's not first class flexi. Because that's four flexes. Right. It's like business class flexi now. Uh, with three simplicity patterns as well. Nice and compact, easy to use, easy to understand easy this to machine, understand, isn't it? Yes. Comes with all the right feet for your quilting, for your sew sewing, your home furnishing, your dressmaking, anything like that. It's a great machine to take to class. It's a great machine to start on. It's a great machine to give to perhaps somebody who wants to start Look sewing. Look at this price. Sure. The price is really good. It's fifty pounds off. It's solid. It sits, doesn't jump around. It's it's heavy enough to sit and it's light enough yet to carry. Uh, it will do your free motion. You can change the feet. You'll find many other companies' feet fit it, so you're not restricted to the feet that come with it. You can expand it. No, it's a nice little machine. And do you know what? I've and happily sewed hours on it now. I went into that sort of this sort of price point when we started. You do get to a point where you want to go up to a, a, yes. a, a, a computer, etc. But to get started, do you know what? 124.99. You'll see Jenny use this exact machine. Just she's putting money where her mouth is on the show. Three six two one four two, which means now suddenly you've got that sexy flexi basket. You got your machine. You got your fabric. You got your wadding. You got your cutting. You got your Patterns. All you need now is someone to tell you how to do it, and it's going to be Me. Jenny Raymond. <laughs> Stay tuned. Right, if you'd like to order any of these items, you can go to the website at any time throughout the show on creativecraft.tv, where um, you know you can sort of purchase. But what I would say is probably watch the show and get all your bits at the Record. end. Um, have a lovely show. Yes, I'll be just over there, um, and um, I'll give you a whistle when I want you back. Yeah. Right, just okay. gonna have some. Oh, hello. breakfast. Thank, yes. you. Thank you. Bye.
And because I haven't said it, Happy New Year to you all. Because I haven't had a chance to say it at the start of the show, and obviously Dean has greeted you and said that many times. Right, we are doing this particular quilt. Now, there is a PDF for this, which you can download. I've decided to split it into three sections. I'm going to do this section to begin with. On February the 14th, I'll do the middly bit, and then we'll finish off with the end bit on the last show and talk about how you quilt it, how you put it together. The pack of fabrics that are available on the show will do exactly the quilt, the backing fabric, the binding, and indeed have something left over. What I wanted to do was to give a chance to teach a whole load of very different techniques. So you learn techniques that you could use as strips, or you could use these techniques perhaps as a block. Now I'm going to be starting off with the sky, and I chose to use the blue spot for the sky. Because you've got so many different fabrics there, you could of course have any fabric you liked. I mean, if you happen to fancy your sky being turquoise, you could have a turquoise sky. If you happen to fancy it being purple, you can have a purple sky. Does it have to be a realistic looking lamp, um, landscape? It could be fantasy. You've got some plains there. Why not think about having a sky that maybe had white in it, the fluffy clouds with the blues and things? So the choice is yours. But I went for simple and decided I would have five and a half inch strips cut from the fabric. Now when you come to cut your strips, you want to cut your strips across the widest part of the fabric. That means it'd be about 21 inches long by five and a half inches deep. This means you'll be going with the stretchy part of the fabric. It stretches more in this direction. So you're going across the fabric along the weft. Weft good way to remember it is weft to white across the fabric. Down the warp, which is the tight taut, is not such a good way to cut your strips because they tend to pucker. So in my opinion, all strips should be cut across the weft, weft to white across the fabric. In other words, the selvages will be my, where my hands are. If you can't tell by stretching it, because it stretches more on the weft, than the warp. You can tell by twanging it, and I'm not certain how good you can hear this, but if I do it close to the mic, right, that is the warp, and this is the weft. It's a lower note on the weft because it stretches, a bit like a drum skin. The lower and soggier the drum skin, the lower the beat. The tighter and harder the drum skin, the higher the beat. They ding, ding, goom, goom. Right, having cut your strips, join them together. Now, the quilt I'm working on is 36 and a half inches wide. So we need to cut this strip to being 36 and a half inches. The snag is my cutting mat is not big enough. And the easy way to do this is rather than sort of mess around with tape measures, you take the strip of fabric, which I've joined together and press my seam open and flat. If you join two strips and press the seam open and flat, you won't get a lumpy bumpy bit on the other side. It does give you a flatter finish. So join your two strips together, open and flat. Take the strip and put it on the cutting mat. And this is where you want to choose. I'm going to put my cutting mat round the right way. All that time setting up the studio, we were messing around. Notice I got it round the wrong way. Take the end of the strip and line it up with the zero. And what I tend to do is I will measure to a reasonable measuring, like, say, 20. At the 20 mark, I'll put a good, firm pencil mark. Take it from the 20 and put it to the zero, and then find 16 and a half and cut through the strip. Now, word of caution, whenever you come to do any cutting, think before you cut. So I've done 20, I'm now measuring 16 and a half, and 20 and 16 and a half in my book actually is 36 and a half. So there is my strip, which will be the width of my sky. Now, there's no reason why you can't have a totally plain sky, but you might want to have something in the sky. And then I thought, I could have a sun, or I could have a moon. What can I use to make the sun or the moon with? And the answer to that was the Dresden plate. It would make me a sort of pointy sun or moon. Now, when doing the Dresden plate, we've done this a lot of times before, and how you use the Dresden plate is actually on the DVD. So making a Dresden plate is on this particular DVD. You can, there is a Dresden plate with 12 sections, or you can use the template we've got here to make the grandmother's fan, which is actually a quarter of a Dresden plate. So your technique for making the Dresden plate is all on that DVD. I used a three and a half inch wide strip of fabric, and taking the template, I cut sections from the fabrics. 
because I'm remarkably lazy, I tend to put my fabrics together and cut two at a time. So let's get this round the right way. So three and a half inch strip, pop your ruler on the top there and cut. You then follow the instructions for making the Dresden plate pieces and you'll end up with a whole load of little bits that look like this. I had 10 sections and I had five in the orange and five in the spot. And I then laid them out to make a half circle. So all the way around like that. And a little hint, and it is repeated on the DVD, is that when you come to sew them together, sew them together in sets of two, and it does pay when you sew them together in sets of two to be systematic. So if you're going to sew them with the yellow on top, the pale yellow, have the pale yellow on top each time and sew the same side. Otherwise, you end up with a design that doesn't fit together. Once you've prepared all your pieces, sew them together to make the arc. And there is my sun or my moon. And again, you have a choice of colors. The snag is there's a little hole here, and I need to fill the hole in. And that is where the circle cut is extremely good because not only will this do my whole circles, my quarter circles, it will do my half circle. So I was able to lay the circle cut template onto the design and see roughly what size circle would fit, the, or semicircle rather, would fit the hole. And I discovered it was a three inch one. So taking a bit of card, place the template and the line we're looking at now is to have the dotty line because that is the center of the circle plus a seam allowance. So lay the dotty line on the edge of the card and I drew a three inch circle. So if I just move this into place, you can see where I drew round it. There we go. And literally drew round. The nice thing about this template is, is a propelling pencil will easily get into the slice and you can just draw round. When you've drawn round, cut it out, and that will be the template for the middle. And we've added on the seam allowance down the edge here, so that's allowed for my quarter of an inch turning when I start to join the bits together. What I tend to do is cut the card out and then cut a lump of fabric that I have decided to have in the middle, slightly bigger than the card. Now, you don't need to add any more on, on the straight edge because that's already got its seam allowance. Remember, we did that when we used the ruler. So take the fabric a little bit bigger and then fold the fabric over the card and you can either by hand tack it to the card or you can do so on the machine. I used a contrasting color so you can see where I did the stitching. This stitching will be pulled out after we have applied this quarter, sorry, half circle to the center of the design. Now I'm going to do nothing with this at the moment because I'm going to move on to the stars. And I thought, if you can have, you know, a moon, you've got to have stars. So let's just pop that out of the way. How can I make the stars? Well, the 60 degree diamond, I've made the stars before because the quilt that we're doing actually is a sort of the grown up version of a much smaller quilt I did in the beginning. And the smaller quilt is actually over here on the wall. And if you look up there in the sky, you've got some stars. Now those have been bonded down with bonder web. And indeed the moon, is actually the circle cut tool where I drew part of a circle and then just moved the tool in and drew another part of the same circle, giving me a moon. So the circle cut tool can be used for things other than complete half or quarter circles or whole circles. You could use it for sections. Just rearrange and rejig the tool when you move it on the paper. So those are bonded down. I thought, mm, do I really want to bond them down? No, I won't. I will actually sew mine. So I pieced my little stars, and I've got a couple here. And it's a junction in the middle that could be problematical, because when it comes to piecing the stars, this is a Y seam, and you'll wonder, what is a Y seam? Let me explain. How you're going to cut the pieces out is I had a one and a half inch wide strip of fabric, laid the one and a half inch wide strip of fabric on the cutting mat, put the ruler on the top, and I'm using the 60 degree triangle, aligned one edge of the triangle with the fabric and literally cut up the edge. That gave me my angled cut. Turn the strip over, realign the ruler. Sometimes you have to turn the strip over yet again. Put the ruler on the top, and we're going to cut a one and a half inch wide diamond. It is clearly marked on the template where you cut. Cut up the edge of it. To make the star, you're going to need six of these, so you keep on cutting until you've got six of them. 
And basically the star is formed by taking two of these diamond sections and sewing them together to make a pair, as we have here. And you'll need three sets of pairs. So there are my three sets of pairs. Now if I place them like this, you can see there is the Y seam. Sometimes it's called an insertion technique. Now this is exactly the same method of piecing as is for, and I've lost it now, the tumbling blocks which you will find on the DVD. So if you're not certain about doing a Y seam, it's the same junction here. And in fact, if you look at this carefully, here is your six pointed star. The green one, the blue one, the yellow one, the green one, the blue one, the yellow one. That is the junction. And when you've mastered that, a whole load of things that have a Y seam will become totally clear. Now, I'm a fan of pressing my seams open and flat, simply because it actually reduces the bulk in the middle. And when you are doing this particular junction, make sure you put the iron on the top and spin the iron round. And that's where the Clover Mini Iron is, and word of warning, don't do it on your cutting mat, it is very good for getting that nice and flat. So spin it round. Because if you use the big iron on such a small piece, you are likely to damage the edges of the shapes. Now, I chose to have an orange dotty one and a pale yellow one, but you could have stars any size you like because the template is multi-sizes and will do them bigger, or you could have them smaller. Now, if for some reason you thought, oh, I can't cope with that, why don't I use the bond web as she did on the quilt she showed me initially? If you are going to use the bond web, then cut strips of bond web, a little bit smaller than the fabric you're going to use, cut from the fabric your one and a half inch wide strip, and then cut out your various diamonds. Lay the diamonds out, but peel the backing paper off first before you lay them out. They can then be satin stitched in place, and that's where the sulky thread will be really good because it's nice and fine and will give you a good sheen. But more about that later. Just returning to the Dresden plate template, because it's multi-sizes, of course you could make more shapes and make them larger, and if you stitch five of them together, it is the good old grandmother's fan. So there is the grandmother's fan. And just to prove to you, if you put 20 of them together, that's four sets of five, you would get the traditional Dresden plate. And you will never guess what tool will be absolutely brilliant for doing the circle in the middle, this one. Dresden plates, again, you'll find on the Easy Peasy Plus Two DVD. So let's move those bits out of the way. What about the geese? Well, when it comes to the flying geese, there you've got a whole load of very different things. I'm using geese that I really are textured. Now, these geese, although they appear flat now, have edges that can be rolled. They can be rolled and stitched down. You can stitch them down by hand, you can stitch them down on the machine, and it's going to give you a very subtly different effect. This is an idea that I've used for borders of a variety of quilts. It's been used for the border of this quilt. You might say, oh, look, hers were flying, going point to point. These are lying down. I will show you how in a moment. So this shape, the technically the goose shape, is literally nothing more complex than two squares and a rectangle. If you wanted to know more ways and a very different way to do a flying geese, you'll find in Karen Hellaby's book. She does geese in a completely different way. So these geese are done in a very different way to the one I'm going to show you. But it just gives you an option because there are so many different ways of making the same design in the patchwork world. To make these particular geese, and you'll find the full instructions in the book, you will need, and I'm digressing from the instructions in the book because I wanted slightly smaller shapes. The ones in the book will give you a finished goose that is actually three inches in one direction and six inches in the other. I'm talking finished measurements. Its raw edge measurement will be six and a half one way and three and a half inches the other. I felt that was a bit big for my quilt. Now, if it measures three inches finished, and I've got a 36 finished width of my quilt, the answer to how many units I have to make is divide three into 36, and of course it is 12. Well, I thought they were a little bit big, and 12 geese, hmm. I wanted something a little bit smaller, so I decided I'd go for a smaller goose. So I've cut three inch squares. And when I finish the goose, the goose is actually going to measure its finished measurement of two and a half inches wide by five inches high or long. Two and a half inches doesn't go evenly into 36. If one's doing frantic mathematics, where's the calculator? Just believe me, it doesn't. 
but 14 times two and a half makes 35. That leaves me with a little bit left over. And this is where patchwork is so useful, particularly if you choose to have that little bit left over, because you can add in the middle a strip, a sort of lengthening strip. And of course, if your seam allowances are a bit up the creek, then this strip could be bigger or smaller, depending on how you wanted to do it. So the geese. The geese are constructed by taking two three-inch squares. I used a variety of different colours. This is the purple stripy variety of flying goose. This is the green stripy variety. Very rare, this particular one. And here is another one, perhaps slightly more common, a turquoise, again, stripy one. So these geese could be any colour you like. Two three-inch squares, fold this rectangle, which is five and a half inches by three and a half, lay it onto one of the squares, put the other square on top, and then you sew down the side. When you've sewn down the side, you'll be able to press the seam open and flat, and you will end up with a shape that looks a bit like this on the back, and you can arrange the rectangle on the front to form a triangle. Just let me demonstrate briefly. Open it up and form a triangle. So to make the geese panel, you will need 14 of these. And what I did was to take two lots of seven of them and sew them together to make a long line. So there are seven of them. I then did another set of seven, checked my measurement, and realized that I actually needed to make it fit the 36 inches finished measurement. I needed a one inch extra strip in the middle. But this is my finished size, so the cut size is one and a half by the length of the goose, which is five and a half. And if you join all those together, with luck, it should fit the quilt. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hmm, she's not rolled back the edges as yet. Well, you don't want to roll the edges back until you've actually stitched on the panel this side and the panel on the other side. Why? The reason being is that sometimes if you roll this back now, you'll catch the edge of this goose in the seam. And you don't want to catch it back when it's rolled back because it'll look messy. It's much better to roll it back afterwards than you can roll it cleanly from the seamed junction. Now you might say to yourself, hmm, is that all you can do with a flying goose? And the answer to that is no. You could use these geese as a border. And on the quilt in the Foldy Roldy book, I've used the geese this way on. So instead of having them flying that way, I in fact decided to ignore the fact it was a goose, in inverted commas, and just stitch them together to make a whole row. When you've sewn them together, if you then add a border, that's when you can roll it back. So the modus operandi would be to sew my geese together, and I've got three of them here, so literally together to make a long line. Add, once you've done that, add a strip to one side because that is the edge that will be affected when I roll those back. So we add a strip to one side. Chuck those on the floor. Hope Jean doesn't trip over them later. So geese all sewn together, strip added to one side down the bottom. It'll end up looking something like this. And it's at this stage now where you can roll it back. And if you've made a slight mess here, then you will be able to roll this back and indeed get it nice and clean there because no one will notice when it rolls back over the junction in the seam. Now, if you didn't fancy doing a border with it, very briefly, there's no reason why you couldn't take eight flying geese and make a block. Here we've got eight geese. In fact, I've only got seven now because I used one a minute ago, which I will have lost. So you'll just have to imagine one. There is a design called the Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman, it's the Dutchman's puzzle. Wake up, Jennifer. There we go. And there's a blue one here somewhere. I can hear you all saying, it's there, it's there. Get it right, come on. Have a blue one in the middle there, and an orange one. And then there'd be another orange one there, and the blue one there, which has gone walk about. There he is. Right, there is your Dutchman's puzzle. And sometimes you find it in books going one way, sometimes you find it going the other way. I always feel that is because he can't make up his mind which way the wind is blowing. If you were to sew these together, you're going to get quite an interesting design, which of course has the potential of rolling all the edges back. And indeed, it's got little pockets that you can put things in. There are a variety of ideas in the book for playing with the Dutchman's puzzle. And of course, there's no reason why you can't change the various colors. So it's a very playable with design because it's made of three pieces, two squares and one rectangle. 
Right, so after the flying geese, we had the bit of sunset. And I thought what I haven't done for a very long time is actually do some seminal patchwork. And seminal patchwork is a design created by the Indians, the seminal Indians, way back in 18-something rather, when they got the sewing machine. And they discovered they could sew strips of fabric together, cut the strips up at angles, and sew these various designs together and link them with a piece of rickrack braid, sort of on plain sections between the various different shapes. And this is just a really easy seminal patchwork design. But there is a little catch to it. You will need to create a couple of strips of fabric. These are two inch wide strips stitched together to make a striped band. And in order to make enough pieces for the quilt, you'll need three of these bands. It does tell you in the PDF. The absolute total paramount law is you'll need to put two of these bands either right sides together or wrong sides together. The choice is yours, but they must be one on top of the other. Do not, do not have them this way up. Please, please don't. So match the colours and right sides facing or wrong sides facing. I'm going to use the 60 degree diamond again because I want just a gentle chevron. So place the 60 degree diamond on one edge of the fabric. This will give you an angled cut. So cut up there. Having got my angled cut, flip the strip round and we're now going to cut two and a half inch wide sections off the block, the strip rather. And the reason for that is, is that when two and a half inches is cut and it's seamed, it will end up as two and two goes very nicely into 36, 18 times. So just make sure on the template you get the line and it's a solid dark line that says two and a half inches cut. So place it on there. Cut with your rotary cutter. Aren't you glad you bought that rotary cutter mat and board offer? And you will need to have 18 sections. You will get 18 sections out of these strips and the extra one you're going to make. When you've cut all the sections, they have to be sewn together, and ideally with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, if I open it out, you'll see how it forms the chevron. And this, believe you me, is only formed if you had two strips and you put them right or wrong sides together. If you don't do that, you won't get the chevron. And if you didn't like the chevron that way, you could, of course, always turn one round and have it like this. When it comes to sewing the chevron together, it pays to, just as you do with the Dresden plate, to sew them all exactly the same. So in other words, you'd be sewing them shaped like this from that side to that side. Now, this little sewing machine, absolute super. It's a nice little mechanical machine, and it's great. It just sews like a dream. I press the seams open and flat, I think you get a slightly different effect, and slightly better, flatter effect in the end. When you get to the end of your strip, you will chain piece. Now, for those of you who don't know what chain piecing is, take the next section, make sure you're sewing it the same way. Don't suddenly turn it over, but sew on the right side, the same side. It's consistency. This is the great thing about patchwork, is be consistent and it works. Play around with it, and sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it's better. You never know. So chain piecing is sewing off one, down the next, down the next, down the next, down the next. When you get to the end, take your little thread saver and sew off the main piece of work onto the thread saver and stop, snip behind the presser foot. This makes all the little chevron sections, they're now joined together. And what I like to do is make my sections up in sets of two. Who's just made an absolute wally of it and got it completely wrong. So let's get rid of that one and return to these. That's why you must sew it properly in the same direction. There we are. Check. Once you've got all the various chevrons, then stitch your chevrons together into sets of four, and I tend to join them all together to make a long line. I like to go along with the sew them together and make them of even size, and then make the even sizes a sort of equal size again, so you keep the weight sort of balanced. Once you've sewn them together, you have a problem because your problem is you've got a wiggly edge. And this is where either the 14 inch ruler is good, or you could use this particular ruler and place the ruler so that you're going to be putting one of the lines of the ruler along the very tips of the points on one side. So line your ruler up there. I'm going to go for the one and a half inch line all the way along, one and a half inches, one and a half inches. Bring it in a little bit so that we can cut it off there. One inch there, one inch there. Yup, I'm fine. And cut up. Don't worry if you get a little indentation, it won't matter at all. 
You're going to do exactly the same thing to the other side of the block, replace the ruler, and now you can, to keep the block straight, check the measurement from this side. So I'm going to cut it to being three inches wide. So my one inch line is on my points, there it is, all the way along, and cut. And that'll give me my strip for my sunset. Just as an aside, I did my seminal strip with just two strips. What would happen to the chevrons if you did, say, three strips together? And here's a little hint given to me by Valerie Nesbitt, is if you're going to be sewing several strips, if you slant the strips in the beginning, you will save fabric. So where's my template? Let's put the template on. Going to again cut at 60 degrees. So I'm bringing it right to the edges of those cut fabrics. Cut up there. And if I wanted much shorter steep, uh, chevrons or steeper chevrons, I could literally cut thinner strips. I mean, the potential for playing with uh, the seminal patchwork is amazing. I'm cutting one and a half inch wide strips. Let's just cut a couple. Remember, I have got the two fabrics right sides together. Do not not do this. It doesn't work. And look what's happened to the design. And I could choose to have one one way, one the other way, or I could turn it round and do it like that if I so desired and get the chevron going all the way along. All you would do is then sew it and then trim it off afterwards. Right, that is the little sunsetty one. But one of the things I really like doing is what's known as delectable mountains. Now, delectable mountains as a border I have used on the quilt we've got in front here. So if we can just get the cameras to look at the edge of the quilt along here, this is the delectable mountain border. It's a sort of mountainous bits running right the way along the top there. That's right. And these are formed from two triangles stitched together. It is not a difficult design to do, but the potential is actually amazing. And I use for doing this particular design the half square triangle, the easy peasy, half's not easy peasy, I'm forgetting who it is now. Where's it gone to? There it is. The easy angle, half square triangle, this one. If you cut with this an eight inch strip from your fabric, so let me just have a quick tidy up, get some of these things out the way. So in the right order, and I'll be able to find them again when I need them for the very end. So from your fabrics, you want to cut yourselves an eight inch wide strip. Having got an eight inch wide strip, you can cut the fabric singly or you can cut it together, it doesn't really matter. But using the template, make sure you've got the end nice and straight to begin with. And that end looks mm, not that straight. Let's trim it off. I wouldn't be without my rulers or my rotary cutters. There's just no way that I could manage to do all the work that I get through without these particular tools. I cannot stress firmly enough, you cannot do rotary cutting without rulers. So having cut my edge of my fabrics nice and level, place the template on the top there. Remembering we had an eight inch strip to begin with, bring the template right to the very edge and cut two triangles. You're going to be needing to making up six squares. So you'll need to do these two triangles six times. And to remind you all of how the template works is when you cut the first one, you don't flip the fabric with this template, you flip the template over. Realign the template so this time the little black nose will hang off the edge of the fabric and cut up the side there. Once you cut your various triangles, you'll join them together. So right sides together and stitch. And here again, I like to have my seam pressed open and flat. There we are, open and flat. If you take two of these, so there are two squares made of half square triangles from the eight inch strip using the easy angle, place them together so the colors match and they are exactly the same. All right, much the same as for doing the seminal patchwork. Think what you're doing before you do it. So line up your seams, line up the colors. We're going to cut this into two inch wide strips. So put the ruler on the top and just cut the ears off to begin with. Flip the fabric round. Now I'm right handed. So the ruler is coming in from the left. Ruler's got an L in it. The fabric is on the right. Fabric's got a R in it. If I were left handed, I would be doing it the other way round, bringing the ruler in from that side. So right handed girls, it's like this and boys indeed. Two inch wide strips, so cut. And because we used an eight inch strip, you will end up with an eight inch square. The nice thing about delectable mountains, if you go a bit wrong, you can always add a bit more mountain in and or a little linking strip in the middle. Having got these sections, if I take these two and open them out 
and take the next two sections, what you are doing is putting the design together so that the diagonals go in the same direction. So one side they're going from the left to the right that way, and the other side they're going from the left to right that way. And open it out. One goes on one side, and one goes on the other side. And one goes on one side, and one goes on the other side. And there is a mountain. Now, that is a blue mountain. If I didn't want a blue mountain, I could turn it round and have a pink mountain. So the choice could be yours. It just depends which way up you choose to arrange them. Or indeed, you could have one going one way and one going the other. The potential for A, cutting these strips out at different sizes, and B, playing with them is quite amazing. I like to then sew these strips together into sets of two. So put two of them right sides together and stitch. Just me very quickly stitch it on the sewing machine, then you can see how nicely this little machine behaves. So sewing off my little scrap, down the edge here, keeping the layers together, seam open and flat, all the way down the bottom. And of course, you chain piece, you pick up the next set. Let's just push these through as well. Now, if I've got a seam in the very start, I'll very often turn the shape over and go from the other end. So I go from a thin bit and off a lump, all the way down here, quickly off the end. You don't have to sew standing sideways, balanced on one leg. But, you know, as we went on at the beginning, exercise is supposedly good for you. But I can sit down in the car all the way home when I drive back. And, of course, onto your little thread saver. Right, having sewn my pieces together into sets of two, it pays to lay them out again and just double check you are having the effect you are after, i.e. the mountain. Stitch those two together. Now to make the border that will fit the quilt, you will need to have six mountains, or six half mountains, and here we have them. And whether you have them so you have the turquoise mountain or whether you have them so you have the pink mountain, the choice will be entirely and utterly up to you. Now, this is an idea, and there's no reason why you can't play with this idea. It comes from two half square triangles stitched together. And indeed, this is a really useful tool because it does such a variety of sizes. You might say to yourself, oh, I don't fancy doing pink and turquoise ones. You could use perhaps, say, a different colour. You could, if you wanted to, say, make red and white ones. Why not? You could have a red mountain or you could have, you know, a white mountain. You could even use them as a border if you use the design that way. Or you could say to yourself, I could take two mountains and sort of muddle them up. So why not take, say, red and white squares that you've stitched and cut up and, say, blue and white stripy ones and literally see what happens if you muddle them up. So if I took two from that one and I perhaps take the next two from this. This, I think, is a really nice thing. I don't want those to want those two. There we go. Let's put it on the right side. That one goes. It's the other one. That's it. You can be shouting at me, oh, it's the other one, it's the other one. That's not quite right, is it? There's something's gone wrong there. I've probably got the wrong one of that. What have I done wrong? Ah, can't cope with that one. <laughs> So by literally playing with them, I'm now going to have to get it right. Let's have a blue stripy one. I don't want that one, I want the other one. There we go. There's a blue stripy one. Is that wrong as well? That'll work. The cameramen are laughing at me. There we are. And I'm going to have the right one on this one. Just talk very quietly amongst yourselves. That's not the right one, is it? It's that one. Just talk amongst yourselves. I'm just about done now. I'm always here for you, one. Jenny. Yes, I know. <laughs> Isn't it nice? So, delectable mountains, folks, can be done with any size triangle you like. I just finished my porridge. I thought I'd come in. Right, OK. So hello. Very briefly, what yep. will happen then, because you've got a couple of moments to wrap up, is when you've made your strips, yes. stitch your mountains together, yes. you've got your... Sunset? Lovely. You've got we all your need a sunset, don't flying we? geese. Oh, geese through a sunset. You've got <gasps> your sky... You could decide to apply the sun, so the sun is peeping out above oh, the clouds look, you and see, have it I can here. See it's all coming together. Or you could have it going that way as I did. 
but you need to sew these strips together before you start to hold and Well, that's wind interesting. It's going to be one of my back. questions. After watching the whole show, yes. and I was sitting, I was thinking, is there an order for this? Yes. Do you know yes. what I mean? Because there yes. has to be an I order, I will now stitch it? that to that to that, and then at that stage, we just go to the quilts on the wall here. And mind you, don't fall okay, over. Watch okay, Mitt, when pay you attention. Sewn, this bit to this bit to this bit, that's when we roll the edges back. And that's when you can apply the star using your satin stitch and that nice sulky stitch. You can either bond it down and you can position it so it goes perhaps over the seam. The moon or the sun, depending on what you want to call it, can be applied to either the edge of the top of the fabric or there's no reason why it can't be applied. So now, do you sew this together before? carrying on with the, yes, like the mountains yes, and things yes. get that block yeah, I'll done. do that block down it's because block. then right, you okay. can roll this back and when you come to the stitching and roll that Fabulous. back let me just show you the stitching because I was putting mine together backstage and Good, I, was, I got a, and I was very well. and I was getting a bit confused do I need to sew it together yet and I'm glad you stopped me <laughs> so having sewn them together when you roll them back you could do this stitching by right. hand or on the sewing machine but you have to sew it afterwards because see how they roll onto the block next door or the border. Right. So I'm expecting my little lot of people yes. to get to the stage of where's the PDF of sewing these together, applying that and that and whacking the mountains on the bottom because the next time's classroom is going on. to do the water, the trees, the snail trail and the house. I've got to be here for the snail trail. The 14th of February, apparently. I know what the 14th of February is. It's Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Why well, yes, is that a deep voice? It's Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Valentine's. But you it's... see, this would be a good time, actually, to get one or two of the things to the show up front as a Valentine's Day present. For the for the others? Yes. Now, Valentine's, that's still a Sunday, isn't it? Yes. It's not Bank Holiday Monday. No, it's not Bank Holiday Monday. <laughs> it's a Sunday. It's Are a we Sunday. Done? Now, of course, um, when are you going to be here next, apart from the... I'm uh, here on this? the 20th. OK, yes. so we expect some more sewing and loveliness. expect some more okay. sewing. On All the of these days. items, remember, are available on the website, createandcraft.tv, uh, and you can reproduce this at any time. But remember, this is a classroom, so the next session will be here in a month's time. Give you plenty of time to catch up and get this all done yep. and sorted. Yep. Uh, so from Jenny get and I... Get the fabric! Get the fabric! Um, get I the ruler, get the DVD, get the lot. Go on.